So uh, I start walking forward three miles per hour, right? My lover also moves forward at three miles per hour on the ground. Uh, then the uh, U old is zero, and the camera goes, checks my velocity, says, oh, you're moving three miles an hour. I'm going to set U new equal to zero minus three miles an hour. Uh, so U new is negative three miles an hour. The treadmill goes three miles an hour in the opposite direction. So now, to keep up with my lover, to keep holding hands with her, I need to go six miles per hour, which is a little more than a brisk jog or so. Uh, and uh, so I'm running now at six miles an hour, uh, and uh, she, uh, well, what happens is the next speed camera goes by, and, uh, or the speed camera hits its next time interval, um, and it sets it to... Well, now the speed camera says, you're going six miles an hour relative to the track, right? So it says, okay, I'm going to set u new equal to negative six, the same way that this would be negative three minus three. Uh, so now I need to go nine miles an hour to keep up with my fictional lover. Uh, so that's what's happening here. Uh, it just keeps going faster and faster. Nine miles an hour is probably my limit. I'm very large and probably can't do much better. Uh, uh, but if I can, then it'll immediately go to 12, and that's just like, I can do that on a bike, you know? Uh, but not, not uh, running. Um, so uh, that's what happens, and then it goes 12, and so on. It linearly increases every time step based on how fast I'm going. Uh, Okay, so that's the notion that, uh, that this algorithm is meant to convey. How does it stop an airplane? How could it stop an airplane? Uh, how does it get to this theoretical idea of u defined equal to negative w? So uh, this is what's called a feedback system. Um, Technically, I believe it's a positive feedback system, even though it goes pos gets bigger and bigger and bigger in the negative direction. Uh, the conveyor belt keeps going faster and faster and faster and faster and faster if your motion relative to the ground isn't zero. Nonetheless, uh, the way that this thing works to stop a plane or stop a car is by breaking its wheels, basically. Uh, this thing keeps speeding up until I am broken, it'll keep speeding up until a car is broken, it'll keep speeding up until a plane breaks its wheels as well. Uh, and uh, that's kind of the general message to take home, is in trying to satisfy this equation, v equals w plus u, uh, for u equal negative w and v not equal to zero, what uh, the physics ends up doing is saying, v equals infinity plus v minus infinity. Uh, and uh, infinity plus v doesn't actually make any sense. Uh, you can't add stuff to infinity because infinity is not a number. But this is the general idea of what it's trying to do. It accelerates some number up to infinity so that it uh, at least kind of mathematically in an odd way, uh, resolves this contradiction that we kind of uh, had to start with. Uh, the question I get in computer science, it's called a race condition. It's a race to see whether uh, the plane takes off first or whether the plane's wheels break first. I actually kind of privately like to think that when we talk about airplane on a conveyor belt, we're talking about some specific airplane, some airplane that really exists, but the conveyor belt is at least somewhat hypothetical. Uh, we're building the conveyor belt. This is what we uh, get the opportunity to do. Uh, in this case, we build a conveyor belt runway such that it will break a plane. And the Mythbusters didn't do this. I know that they normally do uh, do a segment of their show where they try to see how far the myth will go, uh, how far they need to go to get the myth to work. And uh, in this case, it 
they didn't. Uh, but yeah, I don't know what else to say about this. So I'm going to switch to a completely different tactic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's to say that if you've got a wheel, or anything really, but a wheel is the best idea, something that rolls on a surface, and you yank that surface out from under it, let's say this is going forward, then there is a force back on this wheel. A lot of people don't seem to acknowledge this, which that surprises me at any rate. Uh, I, I find this difficult to not believe. If you're going to yank a tablecloth out from under a bunch of stuff, uh, unless you're like a master at it, you're going to pull the stuff along with you. Um, so this deserves some attention, and I just want to show you it with rolling things. Because it's often believed that a wheel which rolls uh, just keep, it just speeds up along with this. And then I want to show you the physics behind that. So uh, I need to set this up somewhere else, though. Okay, so uh, to do this experiment, I have two pieces of paper that have been taped together, and they will be my conveyor belt. Hopefully that doesn't fall off. And I have a salt shaker, which uh, isn't filled. Uh, normal, round salt shaker thing. And uh, it looks like this might have some bias, so... Eh, that's no fun. Does it have bias in that direction? Eh, a little. Uh, okay, so I'm not completely happy with this shelf, but whatever. It'll serve for demonstrating the general idea. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the salt shaker rolling that way and pull this out under it. And with all hope you'll see a dramatic effect. So I'm going to go like that. And it gets pulled all the way back. So I'm going to do this again. Gentle roll that way. Pull it a significant degree back. And, uh, like I said, I don't think this should be controversial, but I have had people tell me, uh, that you can't do this with a wheel, so, uh, you can. So I've had a couple of people tell me that what I just did, uh, for you on this video is impossible. It just can't be done. Uh, and like I showed you, it is possible, it can be done, and I want to talk about the physics involved, because I think it's interesting. Uh, so what you've got is, you have a wheel, and it is on the ground, and, you know, there is some force of gravity pulling the wheel down. I guess I should put that at the center, but uh, it can stay there. And then there's some normal force pointing up, because you see it's not falling through the thing, so there's got to be something pushing it up. The shelf must be pushing it up to balance out gravity. Uh, just the same as if I hold it in my hand, I need to use effort to keep it up, exert a force to keep it up. Uh, so what happens is this thing is rotating with some frequency f, uh, some number of rounds per minute, RPM, uh, or however you want to phrase it. Hertz would be cycles per second. Uh, so it's rotating with a certain frequency, right? And uh, you're increasing that frequency when you pull something out from under it. Uh, to increase that frequency, you have to exert a force uh, in the backwards direction. 